Okay, here we are once again on Wednesday night uh, here at Blue Ridge View Baptist Church in Pickin, South Carolina. I'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday night services, uh, our online services, uh, one of the last times that we'll be having online services, and we're thankful for that. We're on uh, August the 12th, we'll be going back to normal Wednesday night services at 7 o'clock, and on August the 9th, We'll have our Sunday night service at 6 o'clock. So we're looking forward to that, and we're just going to praise God for the opportunity to continue to worship Him and even more and more opportunities. And we're just hoping things get more back to normal as soon as possible. And right now, that's as soon as possible. August the 9th on Sunday night and uh, August the 12th for Wednesday night. We welcome each and every one. The doors will be open in God's house. and. We, everyone that feels safe, just come on and let's worship the Lord together. We'll, of course, we'll continue to worship at uh, 9.15 and, and 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. <clears throat> and that's going good. And we, we'd love to see the house of God filled this week, for the next two weeks, for every week. God's house filled with God's people. And that, that's the way I think it ought to be. We go look to that tonight here in James chapter five. The Lord has a message for us tonight here in James chapter five. We'll be looking in your Bibles. We're thankful here on Wednesday that we can gather once again to wherever you're at, and we're right here in the sanctuary. And but we want to praise God that we can go to Him in prayer and just bring our troubles to Him and just seek His face, just seek His way and His will, and just ask Him to help and bless all our needs and we have many needs in our congregation many people are sick the COVID virus and cancer and you know death has struck but that's life but our God's still on the throne and our God still cares about us when I praise his holy name he still cares and he still wants to come to him by prayer and just just uh, tell him what we need and just help us to lean on him and that's what the Bible teaches us to lean on Him and not, not trust the world, not trust our own self, but to lean on the Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. If you've got a need out there, I invite you right now, as you hear my voice praying, pray with me. Pray for our church staff, our deacons, our pulpit search committee. They're working hard and they need your prayers. And they've got a man... They're searching for God's man, and God's going to send them a man in his time and his way. And it might be next week, and it might be next year. I don't know, but it's got to be God's way. So pray for them. I hope it's soon, but, but it's, if, it's only, if it's God's way, God's will, it'll be perfect timing for our, perf for our pastor search committee. Pray for them in a mighty way every day. Call them out by name. Call these that are sick that you know, these that are bereaved. Call them all out to you. Pray for our president, our country. We're in a mess, but God's still on his throne. And let's go to him tonight. Father, we love you. And we thank you for another opportunity to stand here in your sanctuary. And open up your word and see what you have to say to us at Blue Ridge View here tonight. And to anyone else out there that will be watching by the way of the internet. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for all your many blessings. We just ask you to bless us continually. We're not worthy of our blessings, but you forgive us when we ask you to forgive us, and you bless us despite us, and we thank you for that. We pray for those going through cancer treatment, those battling the COVID, those battling depression, those battling sickness of all kinds, and those battling the loss of a loved one, those that are heart their hearts are broken. Lord, we lift them all up to you. I ask you to bring peace and grace and comfort and strength to them all. There's been many who've lost a loved one recently, and we just, just especially lift them up to you. We thank you for your word that we'll study tonight. Speak through me what you want your people to say, what you want your people to hear. Help me say exactly what you want said and nothing else. Hide me behind the cross, get me out of the way, and just... Take over, Holy Spirit, and work in your people's heart. Help us all grow closer to you through your word, and help us all learn tonight 
Help us all be encouraged tonight. Because you're still on the throne and you still make promises to us and promises right here in your word. And we just got to keep on keeping on for your glory. And there'll be a reward someday. We don't do it for reward, but praise God, seeing you face to face, Lord Jesus, will be a reward enough. Thank you. And we praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And amen. All right, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. We'll be talking for just a few minutes about some things to do while we wait on the Lord's return. While we are waiting on the Lord's return, we got some things to do. And praise God, He's coming back to get us someday. And praise God, by the rapture, the catching away, however you want to call it, I believe in 1 Thessalonians, the Bible teaches that. And he's coming back with his, uh, to get his own, to take us away from this evil world. But then another, the Lord's main return is going to come back when he's going to ru rule and reign, and we're coming with him, and he's going to come and rule and reign and set everything right. Every wrong is going to be made right. He's the ultimate judge. He's really the only judge. And praise God, he's, he's the only one worthy to judge us all. He's going to judge us all for what we've done for His glory or we've done for our own selfish glory. Whew. Let's put self out of the way so we can do it all for the glory of God. When He comes back, Whew. we see Him face to face. When He comes back, He's returning to the Word of God said. Someday, God who cannot lie, the book of Titus teaches us. The book of Titus also teaches us In verse, in, in verse 12, 13 and 14 in the book of Titus, let me read this scripture right quick before we get into James 5. In chapter 2 of Titus, the Bible says that we should, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we, he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. We should be zealous to work a good work for the Lord Jesus Christ, our great God, because that, that is our blessed hope. Seeing Him someday. He's coming back. And, but in the meantime, life goes on. And in the meantime, we've got to do some things for Him. We've got to be the men and women and boys and girls that God expects us to. Those He's saved. About four times in this passage of Scripture, He talks to the brethren. Talks to the brethren. Well, some versions of the Bible say men and women are brothers and sisters. And in, in the King James, it says brethren. Maybe James was a chauvinist. I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to speak to the brethren. I don't know. Maybe not. But praise God. I believe it applies today. When we say brethren, it means all saved people. Men and women, boys and girls. Praise God for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Praise God that this applies to us today just like it did in the early church and throughout church history. Let's look at verses uh, 7 through 12 of James chapter 5. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receiveth the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient and establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Ju grudge not, excuse me, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Verse 10, Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. The Lord, it means pitiful, it means very compassionate. 
he's a tender mercy. But above all, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Lest ye fall into condemnation. Tell it like it is, and be a person who has a great reputation of telling, just speaking the truth. Number one, well, the first question I want to ask you before I get into the main point, are you making the most of your Christian life? Are you making the most of it? Are you making most of the opportunities to serve God through your local church where you're a member or on the job or in the schoolhouse or wherever you go? Are you doing things to serve the Lord Jesus? The more you serve, the more I think you will apply the, the, God, the Word of God to your life. The more you serve, the more you know how good God is to you, the more you recognize all His blessings, the more you won't backslide on Him and get indifferent about the things of God. I hope you're making the most of your Christian life. Ask that question of yourself. Everybody's got to have a personal, have a personal look at that question. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, especially you more mature Christians, are you making the most of your Christian life? Because God expects us not just to sit back and wait on His return. We don't just sit back, we don't just get saved. We don't just get saved and sit on the pew and go to the house and wait and come and go any time we want to or when we just feel like it. We should come to the house every opportunity we can if it's, we're not providentially hindered. Praise God for church attendance. But praise God, God gives us things to do out there in this lost, wicked world. And the world is lost. The world is wicked. The world is evil we live in. And don't stick your head in the sand and say it's not. It is. But praise God. Good wins in the end. Good always overcomes evil. And we should never fight evil with evil. We should fight evil with good. No matter how evil they are. Yes, we should defend ourselves if we're attacked. I know that. I'm not saying that. But if we're physically attacked, that's okay. But we're not going to overcome most evil that we face. At least right here at home and where we live, most evil we face is just by some hateful, mean-spirited person by being mean-spirited back to them. A kind word turns away wrath. A soft answer turns away wrath, the Bible says. Let's do that because we have to endure, number one. The Bible talks about patience all through this Scripture. We must have patience, but we must endure. God expects us to endure. He doesn't expect us to fall back and just, as they say, woe's me, we must endure. Take the farmer, for example. A lot, of, a lot of people I'm speaking to tonight have farmed, and some of the older people I'm speaking to farmed for a living when they were younger. But the farmer who lives and works for a living, make most of his money through farming, they're a great example for us. They put in hard work, and they do, and they do, and they do. <laughs> and they have to wait on God to bless. God to send the rain and God to send the sunshine to make the crops grow and more rain and they have to depend on God to take care of them. Yes, they have to work hard, but the farmer is a great example of for all of us because he's wanting the precious fruit that comes from the precious seed that he planted. So he has to have patience. He has to learn how to endure. He has to learn how to trust God. He's a great example for us as Christians. The farmer is. We must endure. The Bible says to be patient. And patience, sometimes I don't mean one of the greatest uh, definitions I found for patience, it means to just stay put and stand fast. To just stay put and stand fast. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't run away. Just stay on your job. Stay in your position. Stay in your home. Your marriage gets, gets tough. Don't run away. You, 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 problems, everybody has problems. The farmer has problems. Every home has some problems. But we have to be patient with one another. We have to try to endure like the farmer. Because 
God's given us a great example. God tells us in Galatians 6, 9, that let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in doing being nice to people, even if they're not nice back to you. Just if you're nice to somebody and they're ugly to you, like my mama used to tell me, don't be ugly. <laughs> Praise God. Maybe I finally learned that lesson. Don't be ugly to people. That's not what God expects us to do. The farmer, when he's patient, he can't be ugly. He can't go out just because some of his crops get destroyed on a flood or a storm or something sometimes. He can't just go out and curse God. He just starts over again and does what he needs to do to take care. And that's what we've got to do in our lives. Just start again. Just stand where we're at. Just calm down and realize God is still on the throne. God still loves us, Blue Ridge View. God's still taking care of us. The lights are still on. The bills are still being paid. Praise God for those who keep, the, keep sending their money. Praise God. We have, I hear we're just keeping right along, even though attendance may not be what we think it should be. But praise God, God's people still care about His church here at Blue View, Blue Ridge View, and they're to be commended for that. Praise God. We've got to not grow weary in, in well-doing, just being nice, just, do, just working hard, whatever, whatever situation we're in, wherever we go. Whatever we're called to do, do all for the glory of God. He will reward you. He will bless you immensely. And you know that. If you've been saved long and you've been working for the Lord, and you, you don't have to have a title. You don't have to have a position. We all are called to do something. We're all gifted to do something. Just keep on enduring. No matter what. No pandemic or no matter what catastrophe happens. God still cares. God's still on His throne. We must endure like the, like the farmer and also like the prophets. All those old prophets of old. Like Isaiah. He preached and preached. And what did He do? They killed Him. Well, He got to go on to His reward. He got to go on to meet Jesus face to face. Like Isaiah. Most of the prophets of old were killed because they preached the Word or the people were just hateful and hated what they did. They didn't, whether they're the Israelites or some other nation, they didn't like them. Most of them didn't see much fruit for their labor. But they endured the prophets of old. John the Baptist, great prophet, maybe the greatest prophet, had his head cut off. He just told it like it was. He just told it like it should be. He just called sin, sin, and said, you need to repent. And some old king didn't like him. Some old queen, or come on, some old Jezebel, let's call her, didn't like it. Had his head cut off. Well, his reward is great, I guarantee you. John the Baptist, a prophet of old. And Jeremiah was always, they called him the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was preaching his heart out and nobody wanted to listen to him. People, people hated him for the most part. But praise God, he kept on. Praise God. If nobody come to the church house, or nobody came to the temple, or the woods, wherever he preached out, he still was faithful to God. And we got to be faithful. You and I, brother and sister, we got to be faithful like the prophets, to endure, praise his name, praise his name, like the farmer, like the prophets, and like Job. <laughs> Job, what an example. We hear of uh, Christians being persecuted all over the world. And some think we're being perse persecuted right here in the United States. And to a small degree, they, they might be a little persecution here and there to our, our fellow American Christians. But nothing like China and India and some of the Middle East where they're killed and beheaded and just raped and tortured. It may be coming here. And we're going to see who's true and who's really wants to stand up for Jesus. I remember that little girl in Colorado several years ago at that school shooting. And they asked her if she was a Christian, and she said yes. Or whatever she said, I believe in God. She was persecuted. She lost her life, but she went straight to be with the glory to be with Almighty God. And we, no matter what, if somebody asks you were a Christian, 
And it's coming to that day when, like Job, he had to suffer for, for the glory of God. No, I don't think God's going to destroy all my family and all your family like Job was destroyed. destroyed. But he might, for his glory, if, it, if it's his will and his way, but we've got to remember Job in the end. What a winner he was. What a man of God he was. What a perfect, God said he was, perfect man of God. I don't know exactly what that means because only Jesus was truly perfect. But Job was a good and Job was head and shoulders above this old redneck, I'm sure. Praise God, I want to be like a Job. I want to be like a John the Baptist. But no matter what kind of persecution comes, will you stand and say, hey, I'm a Christian? I believe in the one true God, Jehovah. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one I'm going to bow to. And he, praise God, He will reward you. Praise God, He'll take care of you. Praise His holy name. John Phillips said this. Bible commentator John Phillips said this about Job through all of Job's trials and all his troubles and all his heartache. He said, Job came through the ordeal a humbler, happier, holier man. Humbler, happier, holier man. That's how Job came out of his trials. And if you have to go through a trial, and many of you that sit here on these pews every week, I know you went through some heartaches. Some of you went through more heartache and more troubles and trials than we can imagine, but God still cares. And you can still testify to the goodness of God. And maybe someday soon when we get together, somebody can come and stand right here and testify. I'm thinking about two or three right now that could do that. And tell the world how good God is. Even when near-death experiences, even in tragedy, they can still give two thumbs up to the Lord Jesus Christ and cry out and tell us how good He is despite their heartache. Despite their heartache, we must endure. Despite whatever heartache we must go through. Praise God, we must endure. Praise God, it'll make us humblier, happier, and holier. Praise God for the experiences we go through. Praise God for the trials. We must endure no matter what's going on. Just the church doors being shut for a few weeks and... And not having this service, not having that, man, that's nothing compared to what the prophets and Job went through and, the, and other people are going through. Let's get over all that. Let's come together in unity and live and serve and worship the Lord Jesus Christ like He expects us to. We must endure. But number two, we must exalt. Number two, we must exalt. What did the prophets do? In verse 10 it says, Take, my brethren, the prophets who spoke, who have spoken in the name of the Lord. They spoke. They were an example of suffering and affliction and patience. But what did they do? They lifted up the name of Jesus. They talked about their great God and how awesome He was. And he, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have TV. They just had some old loud mouth man to God told to go tell them about Him. Sometimes they listened, sometimes they didn't. But they exalted our Savior. They exalted the one true God. we got to do that. Number one, because He's worthy. Because He's worthy, we must exalt the Savior. We must exalt the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Himself, Jesus Christ, the one true God. We must exalt Him in whatever we do. The Bible says that in one day in Philippians that someday every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. There's a lot of people out there right now who want to defame the name of Jesus. They want to turn they, anything that says God, and especially Jesus. They want to hate on Jesus. They want to desecrate Jesus' pictures and just anything. Here's some of His church houses. They need forgiveness just like I did. They need forgiveness just like you do. They're a soul in need of a Savior. And He died for their sin just no matter what, how much they cuss them and hate them. 
no matter how that much God's people get persecuted by all these hate groups that want you to bow to them. Lord, help us. If I ever bow to any, and anyone or kiss the shoes of anyone, somebody take a gun and shoot me. Shoot me multiple times if I ever do that. If I ever, I don't care who it is. I don't care. I've lost my mind. I need to, to die. And you need to die too if you ever bow for anyone other than the Lord Jesus Christ. These athletes, these professional athletes that bow in, in honor of a hate group, they're a disgrace. And I don't care who knows it, and I don't give a rip if they come in here and attack me today. I will not bow, and I'm not probably going to watch their trash anymore. They need, somebody needs to tell them that Jesus is the only one that's worthy. We must exalt the Savior. I didn't mean to run that rabbit, and I didn't mean to get off on that, but bless God, I've asked Him not let me say something I shouldn't say. Praise God for those who will stand. That one San Francisco baseball player who stood. And maybe the whole Cleveland Indian team who stood instead of kneeling during the national anthem. They ought to be exalted a little bit. They ought to be congratulated. They didn't bow for, to honor some hate group from murdering dogs who need Jesus just like us. All of us, He is worthy. One day they'll can. Antifa and the BLM and the KKK and any other group, they're all going to bow and say, Jesus is Lord. I hope they do it on earth before they face the judgment of Him fixing to cast them off into outer darkness where the worm dieth not and the fires never quenched in a place called hell. I hope they do. Even those filthy, rotten dogs need another chance. Lord, help us. Lord, Holy Spirit, work in them just like He worked in me. Praise His name. We must exalt the Savior. Praise God because He is worthy. And we are blessed. We are blessed. In verse 11 when it talks about we're happy if we endure, we've heard of the patience of Job, and we have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. The Lord is very pitiful. That's where I'm talking about we are blessed. God is so full of compassion. Jesus Christ was so full of compassion on that cross when He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He's full of compassion. That's grace, compassion. That's mercy, tender mercy. I'm a hell-deserving sinner, but praise God because of the compassion and because of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven because of what He did. Because I believe in that and that alone to get me. Oh, I'm so blessed. If that's the only blessing I ever got was just being saved and then God threw me away, that would be enough. <laughs> and that would be enough for you too. But praise God, He blessed me before I saved and He's blessing me every day. Count your blessing. Count your blessing. Count your mercy. Count the, the compassion that God shows on you and you'll realize He needs to be exalted. And talk again about Job. Through, through our blessings and some of our blessings come as raindrops, as the song says. God, Warren Wiersbe said, God was glorified and Job was purified purification of a, by being afflicted. Whew. I don't want to. I'm not going to ask for affliction, but if that's what it got, got to take to get me closer to God, well, by God's grace and by God's mercy and compassion, He'll help me through it. And He's helped me through things in my life and He's helped you. And Praise God. If somebody here today, they would they could <laughs> dozens of members of this church would stand up and tell about the tender mercy and compassion of God during their lives. Praise God. We must exalt Him because He is worthy. We are blessed. Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. I must hurry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We must exclaim. What does that mean? We better be loud about it. <laughs> In verse 9, there's something we shouldn't be loud about. The Bible says, Grudge not 
one another, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be, con be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Judge not one against another. That's something we should not be exclaiming. We should not be shouting or murmuring and grumbling. That's what it means to grudge not. Murmuring, just being hating on one another. Especially Christian men and women boys. In a family of God, we shouldn't be grumbling about one another. Shouldn't be arguing about things. No, we don't have to all agree on every little thing or every major thing. Well, maybe we need to do major, agree on the major things. The major things that God says to love Him and love our neighbor. If we was doing that, we wouldn't be grumbling. Oh, we got this old fleshly body, and I know I grumble sometimes, and I have to ask God to forgive me. We must exclaim. If we're, we're not going to be exclaimed, we're not going to be telling the world about Jesus. We're not going to be doing what we're supposed to be doing if we're grumbling and murmuring. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. The Bible says, as we move on, how we exclaim. We just, we just say what we mean in our normal conversations. The Bible says in verse 12, to, to swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, or neither by any other oath. Let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Just, just plainly tell the truth of what it's saying. You don't have to swear by heaven. The Bible says don't do that. What is heaven? That's where God's throne is. That don't please God if we swear by heaven. What's the earth? That's God's footstool. Don't swear by the earth. Just say, it happened this way. I saw it. The dog ran across the road and laid down. Whatever the... I know that's silly, but whatever it is, you got to say, just say it. Sometimes you got to get a little loud, and you got, sometimes you got to get a little excited though about you're going to exclaim something. Say, Jesus saved me. I was once a sinner, but Jesus saved me. Sometimes we got to shout that. Sometimes, if that's your character to shout, that's okay. But praise God to obey the word of God. We don't need to be swearing about anything. We don't have to swear on the Bible. I'm not going to say you're going to die and go to hell or that's a terrible sin. I'm just saying the, the Word of God says just, just tell the truth. Tell the truth. Don't, the truth is Jesus saved. The, Jews, the truth is He tells us to obey His Word. And he, he says to obey is better than sacrifice. And what He tells us to do? He tells us to endure, to be patient here. Like all these examples we got. Like people, just think about somebody in our church family that you know is a great patient person. Maybe it's an older person, maybe it's not. But think about somebody who you know, you've seen, you admire, and you wish you were like them. Well, just try to be like them. Try to, they just obey in the Word of God. Praise God. I, I want to avoid the wrath of God. I want to exclaim, because I want to obey the Word of God, but I want to avoid the wrath of God. The last part of verse 12 says, Lest ye fall in, con in condemnation. I don't want that to happen. And it also talks about when we grudge against other, lest we be condemned. Because the judge, the one, the only true judge, the Lord Jesus is our judge. I don't want His wrath upon me. I don't want His wrath upon the United States, but it's here and it's coming and it's going to get worse and worse if we don't humble ourselves and pray and seek His faith and truly turn from our wicked ways. Church, God help us. God help us. We must endure. That's the message. We must exclaim. We must exhort. But God wants us to be patient. He wants us to keep on keeping on. Praise God. He wants us to keep on keeping on. What, as I get ready to close here, another question. What will the Lord find you doing when He returns? What will the Lord find you doing when He returns? Praise God. Luke 12.43 says, 
Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he, when he cometh, so doing. And that verse it says we're blessed if we're doing something. But before, before verse 43 in Luke 12, it talked about being faithful and wise. Being faithful and wise. That's what we're blessed if we're doing. It's wise to be faithful. Praise God. Let's be faithful to God's house. I'm not criticizing those who have health concerns who can't make it right now, but a lot of you, I am criticizing those that are staying home just because you're indifferent, just because you're backslidden. Get yourself to God's house. You'll be blessed. Are you faithful to God's house? Are you faithful on the job to be the person that God would have you to be on that job, the faithful witness by just doing things and not laughing at dirty jokes and, and not going along with the crowd, going along with the world? Are you standing up for Jesus? Are you faithful and wise? It's wise to be faithful. We're supposed to be looking. We're supposed to be looking. Looking for that blessed hope. We're supposed to be serving. We're all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ in some way. Some of us, maybe we get older and we're not as physically fit as we used to be. We can't do as much. That's where you younger folks need to step up and do what you can do. So the Lord's watching and the Lord's coming back. Praise God. We're looking and serving, but we're supposed to be loving. God is a God of love and the greatest commandments. We're told that we're supposed to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind and love our neighbor as ourselves. It is, the Bible says we're supposed to do good to those any and everywhere, but especially of the household of God. That means we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you're doing that. Can I ask you another question or two before I close? Before I finish, I'm closing. Are you right with God, brother and sister? If you're a saved man or woman, boy or girl, are you right with God? Are you right with God? If you died today, would you be ashamed of anything that He's going to disclose to you that, that's sin in your life? Repent today. Repent right now wherever you're at. And ask God to forgive you for your slackness, for whatever is in your life. No, it's none of my business. But God told me to ask you and tell you He wants you to, wants to forgive you. You just got to ask Him. If you got something against your brother or sister, if you said something ugly, if you said something mean-spirited and not ask for forgiveness from them, think about that. Do that. We want to be unified here at Blue Ridge View and we want the church everywhere to be unified. We're not going to have revival if there's all against one another, even small things. Brother and sister, make sure you're right with God and any other person out there. Are you right with God? Any other person that might be out there, they may not be but one person watching me on the internet that's lost. And then again, they might be a hundred. I don't know. Friend, what I said probably don't mean much to you. But Jesus died on a real rugged cross so you don't have to die and go to hell so your sins can be forgiven and your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you'll forever go, to, go and be with Him when your time on earth is over. It's the greatest thing, greatest experience any human being could ever experience. The love of God that was, was shed and borrowed at Calvary. Place your faith if you're lost. I'm saying, are you right with God? Place your faith in Lord Jesus Christ today. He'll save you. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe you're a sinner that can't save yourself. And believe. You don't have to understand any, the whole Bible. You just have to believe in your heart and serious that knowing if you died today, you wouldn't go to heaven, that you would go to hell. Please don't put it, that off today, which you may not have a chance to do tomorrow. Believe on Jesus. Believe on Jesus. And for you Christians, one final question. I heard a song last night. I never heard it, and I don't know who was singing it, and it got all over me, and I about to ready to cry. And one final question, question, Blue Ridge View, and I'm going to pray. I love you, and I thank the world of all of you, and I want the best for all of you. 
But wherever you're at right now, wherever, I don't mean right here in this sanctuary, but wherever you're at right now, what would you do if Jesus walked in the room? What would you do if Jesus walked in the room? Are you ready for Him to walk in the room wherever you at? Praise God, I was last night. Yeah, I need to clean the house. But I ain't worried about my house. I'm worried about this house. Praise God, I was prayed up. I hope you're prayed up and forgiven. What would you do if Jesus walked in the room with you? i tell you what I'd do. I'd probably get down on my knees and cry like a baby. Be in the presence of my Lord and Savior. Father, we love you and we praise your holy name. Lord, we pray for Sunday services here at Blue Ridge U. May you be exalted and help us to endure whatever we have to endure. Help us with patience until we see you face to face. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood. We pray for that soul that's nearest hell. You reach down by your grace and save them, and we'll give you all the glory. In your precious holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.